Today we're going to go ahead and build our app for activity 2.1 keep me in the loop. To open your app inventor you're going to need to open a new tab or window in your browser and go to appinventor.mit.edu. From here you'll log in using your google student email address, go ahead and click on create apps, and then click on projects from the top toolbar and then click on the import project.aia from my computer. Here you will upload the keep me in the loop AIA file that has been provided to you. We're going to go ahead and explore the components that have been pre-built for you. Depending on your device's screen size, you may need to update the X and Y properties of the school bus in the designer view to make sure it is starting at the correct location. Let's go ahead and see how we can check whether the bus is starting in that correct location. Once you're in your MIT App Inventor and you have your Keep Me In The Loop app opened up, you're going to also want to go ahead and connect this to your app companion. This will allow us to test our app in real time. What you'll notice is that when you bring the app in, based on what type of computer or tablet you are using, your school bus may not be located perfectly in the middle of that school. That will affect how the route is taken and when we draw the lines to show that route, uh, it may not be over top of those squares. So you're going to need to modify your app slightly just to get that school bus in the correct location. This could be different from computer to computer or tablet to tablet and so on. So you're going to have to experiment a little bit to make sure you get it positioned just right. You may need to even go back after we develop our app and our routes to make sure that those lines are placed correctly. Now what we're going to look at here is clicking on that school bus sprite. And from that school bus sprite, we have an X and Y coordinates. And that's basically where your school bus is being placed onto that canvas. Right now, we have a value of the X axis set to 263 and our Y axis is set to 248. You can see that we don't need to move the bus much, just slightly to the left and up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and change my X value from 263 to 260. From here, once I click off, I should see that bus move slightly, and now you can see it's kind of centered in the middle of that road. The next thing I'm going to need to do is move that bus up. So I'm going to go ahead and change that value from 248 to 243 and click off of that, and let's see where that bus lands. So looking at that, it looks like that school bus is placed perfectly right in the middle of the school and right in the middle of the road. That's going to allow us to now proceed to the next part, which is going to be developing those loops and getting the school bus to actually move. Now that you've corrected your school bus sprite, it's time to explore the code that has been pre-built for you. Notice the navigational commands move forward, turn left, and turn right. If you expand these blocks, you can see the code that is contained in each one of them. Do not alter the code for the blocks or the bus will not move correctly. You're going to use these commands to navigate the bus to the museum. These commands are known as procedures. A procedure is basically a set of code that performs an action and is considered a specific type of abstraction. Abstractions allow computer scientists to focus on the task at hand and not get distracted by the details. The reason that procedures are considered a form of abstraction is because you can use a procedure to hide details in your program. With the move forward procedure, all of the code necessary to move the bus forward one position on the map is contained in one place in the program and can be collapsed and hidden. This means that you can call this procedure whenever you want to move the bus move forward one space. Let's go ahead and try our looping skills by creating and testing the block below in our App Inventor. You will notice that we will be creating an event handler that when the start button is clicked, we will call that bus to move forward, and then we're going to use a loop to get it to turn left. So let's go ahead and build this and see what happens.
Once you're in your MIT App Inventor, we're going to go ahead and navigate over from our Designer view to our Block view. From the Block view, you're going to notice that there's already several commands that have been pre-built. We have several different procedures that we're going to be looking at. The main one that we're going to be looking at right now is the Move Forward, as well as the Turn Left. Now, if we take this procedure and expand it by double-clicking, we're going to see all of this code that has already been pre-built for us. As a computer scientist, we don't need to worry about writing all of this code each time we want the bus to move forward. So what we've done is created a procedure that everything within that procedure will occur when we call the move forward procedure. So we don't want to worry about modifying any of those procedures at this time. We're just going to go ahead and leave them alone. What we are going to do is go ahead and find our start button and we're going to look for that when start button is clicked. So this event handler is going to trigger our move forward procedure. From here, we're going to go ahead and find our procedures and we're going to go ahead and call that move forward. Now, once we have that call move forward, what basically would happen at the moment is if we click the start button, the bus should move forward one space. So let's go ahead and open up our app companion and just test the start button at this time. As you can see, I have my MIT app companion opened up. And now we're ready to go ahead and test to see what happens when I click that start button. What we should see is that bus just move forward one space. So if we go ahead and click that start button, we can see that the bus did indeed move forward one space. If your bus is off a little bit, you may want to go back and change those X, Y coordinates so that it is perfectly in the middle of that square. Now that we have the move forward procedure added, now let's go ahead and add a loop. Once you're back in your MIT App Inventor, we're going to be creating a loop to get our bus to turn left. And this is just a way for us to test out what loops actually do. So we're going to go up to our control feature here. And what we're looking for is our for each number from 1 to 5 by 1. Now we're going to go ahead and drop that into our start button. We're going to modify this slightly because we're going to be changing the 2 from 5 to 3. Here we're going to go ahead and use our call turn left. So under our procedures, we'll go ahead and find that turn left procedure and drop that in. Now before we go over to the MIT app companion, let's think about what this event handler is really saying it's going to do. When that start button is clicked, we should get that bus to move forward one space. Then for three times, we're going to turn left. So at the moment, our bus is facing forward or north. If it turns left three times, which way should that bus now be facing? So let's jump back over to our MIT App Companion and see what happens now when we hit that Start button. So now that we're back in our MIT App Companion, now we're going to look at what will occur when we do indeed use that when start, call move forward, and then our loop. So now when we go ahead and click that Start button, not only did the bus move forward, but it actually turned left turned left again, turned left a third time, and now is facing in the right or east direction. Now that we've practiced a little bit with our MIT app companion and creating loops, it's time to go ahead and create our code for our bus loop. Before modifying your code in MIT app and better, make sure that you go ahead and delete the test block that we used in the previous step. Once that is done, we can go ahead and take a look at what we will be performing in our MIT App Inventor. In order for you to program your event handler correctly, we're going to need to go back to activity 1.2, where we used our bus map. During this activity, you were to select one of three routes. Here you can see that there are two routes already selected for you on the screen. Using the selected route, you can go ahead and create your linear algorithm as we did back in activity 1.2. Now you can use your existing algorithm or you can select a different route if you do choose to. For this example, I'm going to go ahead and select route two. What we're going to look at doing is using that linear algorithm and the 26 steps that I've created in order to get the bus from the school to the museum. Now, instead of writing out 26 individual steps, we're going to go ahead and use those loops in MIT App Inventor to condense our code. So once you've selected your route and you have your algorithm ready to go, you can go ahead and head over to MIT App Inventor and let's go ahead and program that start button. Now, once you're over in your MIT App Inventor block view, one of the things we need to do is make sure we get rid of this when start button demo program that we created earlier. Now to save a little bit of time, we can keep the event handler because we're still gonna need to use that. 
Now our main focus here is to just simply reduce the redundant code that we see in that linear algorithm. So on my user interface, I can see that my first four steps are gonna be repeating. I'm gonna to need to move my bus forward four spaces before turning left. So in order to do this, what I'm gonna look at doing here is just creating that loop. So in that control structure, we're gonna find that for each. And since we want the bus to move forward four times, we're gonna put the call forward in the do command. We're also gonna to need to change that two from five over to four. What this will do is simply go ahead and move that bus forward four times. After it moves forward four times, we needed it to turn left. So we're just gonna simply take that turn left and place it outside of that loop. Now in this case, my bus should move forward four times, then turn left. Here, you can see that we have another piece of redundant code. We're gonna to need to move forward two places instead of turning right. All we are gonna do is simply duplicate the code that we already have. So let's go ahead and grab that for each number. We could simply duplicate that, put it down below the turn left, and we're gonna have that go forward two times instead of four. Then we'll have the bus go ahead and turn right. Now you can go into your procedures and find that turn right, or you can duplicate that turn left and just hit the drop down arrow to make it go right. Now you're gonna to need to go ahead and finish writing all the code in order to get that bus to the museum using your loops. If done correctly, you should be able to get that bus to travel from the school to the museum with one click of the button. Once you have your code written, go ahead and test it in your app companion to make sure that it works correctly. Now, once you have your program opened up into your MIT app companion, it's time to go ahead and give it a test. If you click the start button, we should see the bus should navigate following the correct route all the way to the museum. Now, don't worry about the red line or the exact positioning of the bus at this time. In our next activity, we're going to address how we can tweak some of those event handlers or procedures that were pre-built for us to correct some of those issues.